Hello, Braxis here, and I'm playing some Universe Sandbox 2. So I have a pretty straightforward suggestion from Mr. Money. <laughs> Good name, by the way. Uh, he asks, what if Saturn hit Jupiter at the speed of light? Pretty simple question. Let's go ahead and find out. So if Saturn hit Jupiter at the speed of light, let's go ahead and place Jupiter right here in the center. And let's go ahead and prep Saturn for a launch. Let's go ahead and set it to a value of one light speed. We're gonna have to slow down time because this is gonna happen very, very quickly. So let's go ahead and reduce the time step here and get ready to launch Saturn. So here it goes. Not moving very fast because I have it set to milliseconds right now, less than milliseconds. But as I speed it up here, we'll be able to watch as Saturn slowly appro approaches Jupiter. Let's go ahead and speed it up just a little bit more. Keep in mind that this is currently 40 milliseconds per second. And here comes the impact. It's going to knock Jupiter pretty far, I imagine. Let's go ahead and uh, close that. Ooh, the simulation actually kind of froze up, but look at that impact. You can see it's starting a shockwave, but it looks like it just completely lagged up. Like it's not able to actually do this. Oh, you can see fragments and particles everywhere. Not really heated up though, so they're not visible. Let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit. It just flew off. Oh yeah, there's particles everywhere, but this is a little bit weird. I've never seen anything really like this before. Let's go to powers, oh, because it's two gas giants, if we delete all the particles and dust, will the simulation actually catch up? It does not appear so. That's interesting, it just completely broke the simulation. But as you can see, Jupiter is still actually spinning. That's very weird. Let's go ahead and clear these two out, delete all the particles and fragments, and let's go ahead and just place another Jupiter right here. Okay, so there's Jupiter. And let's launch Saturn once again. This time at a slightly faster time scale. And this time, let's go into the video settings and let's reduce the particle count to 1024. So let's see. Let's go ahead and launch Saturn. Okay, that was a little bit more. Uh, expected outcome okay so we have like this huge mark here not really any shock waves we're moving currently around two times real time at the moment and as you can see the surface temperature of Jupiter is 33,204 degrees Celsius so incredibly hot I imagine if I fast forward Jupiter will turn red not really like I would expect it to Interesting. I wonder if it's a climate thing? No, it doesn't appear so. Hmm. Oh, there it goes. Now it's actually turning red. You can see it in the uh, thumbnail on the top right that uh, Jupiter is actually heating up. But it's incredibly hot, and as you can see, a lot of the gases are, well, they're gases. I guess they're kind of turning into a plasma. I wouldn't say they're boiling away, that just, just doesn't even make sense, so I guess they're becoming some kind of plasma. They're trying to kind of leave the atmosphere of Jupiter, as you can see. And Jupiter is becoming very, very hot. It's going to start glowing. In fact, it's going to start glowing probably a very, very bright white. Now, the reason why these particles are escaping in this fashion is entirely because, well, they're moving with the velocity of Jupiter, so... Not just like leaving a huge trail, they're just doing that pretty much. And as you can see, Jupiter has traveled pretty far, and you can see there's tons of fragments which were probably a mix between Jupiter and Saturn. So let's go ahead and zoom back into Jupiter, which is getting incredibly bright now. It's starting to glow blue. Very cool. And it is just burning away its mass very quickly. Let's go ahead and go to the motion tab and see what its velocity is. Start it from a velocity of zero. 
currently 189,000 kilometers per second. That's incredibly fast. Or 63% the speed of light. Pretty crazy. In meters per second, that's a value of, is that 1 billion? 1.8 billion, it looks like. And kilometers an hour, what's that, 6.8 billion? That might be 680 million, actually. Nonetheless, pretty cool. Anyways, that is what happens when Saturn impacts Jupiter at the speed of light. Of course, I think in reality it would have probably destroyed Jupiter in such a way that uh, all of its gas just kind of scattered in this kind of amazing looking trail or something. But the game doesn't actually support that just yet, so... Basically, it just knocked Jupiter and made it go very, very far, left a huge kind of explosion of particles, which I can't even see anymore. Be probably due to the uh, particle limit, actually, come to think about it. And made Jupiter incredibly hot, and currently its atmosphere is just slowly cooking away. As you can see, it's losing mass pretty quickly. Let's go ahead and speed up time. Just kind of accelerate this process if we can. Yeah. And now it's equivalent to 10 moons. So I think we're now left with the core of Jupiter, which is pure iron. So all the gas is basically just vaporized, made a cool trail, and left with the solid iron core of Jupiter. So, there is one more experiment I want to try before I end the video, and you may have noticed there was barely any particles when Saturn actually hit Jupiter. Um, I think this is because the game doesn't really calculate things once you actually do collisions at the speed of light or above. If we go over to Saturn, Let's go ahead and throw it at Jupiter, but this time at 0 0.25 the speed of light, which would be 25% of the speed of light. So let's see what happens if we just do this. Let's go ahead and slow down our time step so it doesn't happen too quickly. And, well, let's go ahead and launch it. And let's slow it down before the collision actually happens and kind of observe what happens with the particles when we actually do it at slower than the speed of light. Jupiter's still going to be shot out pretty quickly and heat up pre like quite a bit, but... Hmm... The same glitch actually occurred. That is pretty odd if you ask me. This is not at all what I would actually expect to happen. Because if we uh, go over and do this with like two rocky worlds, it's use for example Earth and let's go ahead and launch Mars at it. I wonder if it's going to do that same kind of glitch. Um, it doesn't appear so. That happened way too quickly though. Couldn't really observe it so let's go ahead and try that just one more time. Okay so we have it as a still object. Let's go ahead and slow down time to around one minute. Or, nah, that's fine. We'll speed it up if it's too slow. This is a little bit faster than real time. And that collision was much more violent. You can actually see the rocky particles. And now Earth is going to move very quickly. And as you can see, it heat up quite significantly. And all the water is actually going to evaporate away from Earth. So that seems to be kind of a bug or something exclusive to gas giants when you do a, a very abrupt collision like that. Very odd. And as you can see, Earth does actually have its shockwaves. Pretty cool. So it seems like if you do a collision way too quickly, the simulation just kind of bugs out. You don't get your shockwave, you don't see the particles. But if you do it at around 25% the speed of light, it seems to work just fine. Let's give Jupiter and Ch Saturn one more shot real quick. And this time we will try to keep it somewhat fast so let's go for yeah we're right about real time right now so let's go ahead and just launch Saturn and Jupiter again once again at 25% the speed of light and no there's no shockwave that I can actually see it did the exact same thing except uh, 
The only real difference is it did not actually heat up nearly as much. This time it's uh, 6,100 degrees rather than, uh, what was it before, like 60,000? Well, that was an interesting little bit of uh, an experiment. As you, as you can see, that's actually pretty cool. It's like illuminated on this side. As you would expect, it being molten. And look at the texture it's using. Interesting. It looks kind of more like molten rock or something. Hmm, a bit odd. Well, anyways, that's kind of the end of this experiment. If you guys liked the video, please leave it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe. It really does help. And I will see you guys in the next one.